Hi guys, welcome to another quick blender tip and in this tutorial and we're going to be creating some flowing water. So previously in our water simulator we created some splashes. Now we're going to make some water flow like it's coming out of a tap. Um, so we're going to start with our basic cube object and we'll scale this up. And I'm just going to drag it up above our plane there. Hit Z, we're going to go into wireframe mode. And this object, um, we're going to apply to this a um, fluid simulation. And then we're going to change the type to domain. We'll just leave that with the default settings for now. And now we're going to create a sphere, which we're going to drag upwards here. Let's position this there. And again, we're going to um, give this a fluid. And this time we're going to make it out um, inflow. So this is going to make the water flow from our sphere here into the cube and it's going to continue until the cube is basically full up. Um, so it's going to lower down our animations to make it a little shorter. Let's say 60 frames will be enough. Um, okay, now we're going to set some velocity for this. So the we have the x, the y and the z axis. So on the z axis I'm going to Maybe set like a slightly negative velocity on the X. I'm going to set that a little bit forward. So that's the, the, the speed that the water is going to be flowing and in what particular direction. So now we're done with that. If we come over here and hit bake, you'll see that our um, fluid simulation will begin to run. And what we're going to see, hopefully, is the fluid flowing like so. There you go, you see? So it almost looks like a, a tap has been turned on. And this fluid is flowing out from our sphere object and will begin to fill up our domain, our domain being the, the cube here. So you could model um, a bathtub, for example, and um, you could show this as a, as a tap filling up the bathtub. This could be a wine bottle pouring into a, um, a glass. Um, I'm not going to go into actually modeling these individual things. I'm just giving you these um, short overview of how to use the fluid simulator. So I'm just going to stop that simulation as far as it's got there. Um, it takes a while to run all the way. I'm going to go into solid view and if we play You'll see now we have our liquid coming out, flowing into our cube. And you can see where it's hitting the sides there. Um, now, we can alter the flow by, say, making this smaller. Then the liquid is going to flow more slowly. So if we make these, say, 400 and 400 and then we hit bake again this time the fluid should flow more slowly because our velocity has been set to less so see now it's we get more of a trickle of water rather than this gushing flow that we had a few moments ago Let's just play this. There. Yeah. So you can see how changing the velocity changes our flow. So now we've got more of a trickle rather than the the, uh, the high pressured water that was coming out before. Now we can change in our fluid world here, we can change some presets. So we could change this to say a thicker liquid. Um, now it's going to flow 
um, a lot less um, viscosity than before because honey is thicker. So you should see this time that the, the liquid behaves in a slightly different way. You can see as it's pouring out there, it doesn't splash around so much. It's, um, it's a thicker liquid, the way it's behaving and the way it's spreading out, you can see, is more like a, a viscous liquid rather than the liquid that we had a few moments ago, which was water, which splashed around a lot. Um, so we'll change this back to water. Um, now in our fluid boundary, I'm going to create a couple of subdivisions there. Um, so that will give us a bit more effect to our splashes. And finally, what we're going to do is add a collision object. So an object that you want this to, to flow around. So I'm going to add in now a torus object. I'm going to scale this up. We'll drag it around, put it into the, uh, the path of the water, and now we'll add this as a fluid object, and we need to put it as an obstacle. We'll just leave those in the default settings, come back to the cube, and bake again. And now this time, when the simulation runs, the water, when it hits our torus object, should splash off it and flow around it. Now, I don't know how much splashing we'll get because we set the velocity to low, so the water is not going to be hitting it with a, with a high pressure. But you should see that it's colliding with the object, as you can see there, and it's flowing around it. So... Just cancel our fluid simulation. I'm going to move this torus a little bit so that it's more in the way of the flow. I'm going to scale it also like this. Maybe bring it up slightly. Okay. So now we've done that, we'll go back to our cube and we'll bake again. Now you can see the liquid hitting and splashing off. You can see there's particles of water splashing off of there. So I'm just gonna pause the video a moment. I'm gonna let this fluid simulation run the whole way. So, uh, I'll be see you in a few moments. Uh, has finished baking, and now when we run this, you can see there is our simulated water coming and flowing into our domain object. Now the water looks a little bit blocky, so what we can do to help with these things is, um, first of all, in tools, we can turn on smooth shading. Another thing we can do in our viewport display is up the geometry the final, that will give us a smoother finish. Um, I have to be careful with that though, it does increase the polygon count, so if you have an underpowered machine, you may end up crashing it. And you can also add a new modifier, um, subdivision surface modifier, which will help to smooth things out a little bit as well. So let's play that again. It's a little bit slow now because we've uh, increased our polygon count significantly. So it's playing a little bit slowly. So um, I'm gonna go back over to the preview geometry. For your final render though, you'll want to go to the, um, to the final. But you can see just with the smoothing and the subdivision modifier, we already have you know a smoother liquid there. Then you can pause this at any point and you could render an individual frame um, showing your liquid there. So I hope that you found this tutorial useful. Um, it's another um, way of using the fluid simulator. So 
uh, if you're interested in making um, splashes, so having an object collide with the water and, and make a splash, it's kind of the opposite of what we've done here. This is the, the, the water is colliding with the object, but you could have an object colliding with the water, creating a splash. We covered that in another fluid simulator tutorial here on my YouTube channel. So check that out if you're interested in more of the fluid dynamics um, and the capabilities of the fluid simulator here in Blender. So I'll be doing another tutorial tip on this, um, so how we can make the water flow and fill up, say, uh, an irregular object. At the moment, we're just filling up this domain object. You may want to fill a round wine glass, for example. Um, so we'll cover that in another tutorial tip. I try to keep these as short as possible so that you can just get right stuck in with Blender. And um, if you found this video useful, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.